Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 4, Episode 10, No Time Like the Past, written by Rod Serling and starring Dana Andrews as Paul Driscoll and Patricia Breslin as Abigail Sloan. And No Time Like the Past is kind of a strange Twilight Zone episode in that I feel like it's almost two episodes in one. The first and second half of this episode feel like two kind of totally different things that don't really totally work together, but fortunately the stronger half of the episode is the second half, which I think helps it somewhat. And a lot of the scenes are really effective. It just seems like some of the overall logic in this episode is kind of lacking. But if you can find that to your satisfaction, I think you'll enjoy this one. But for me, it doesn't all work. So I'll get into the episode and I'll explain as I go. So it starts with two men, which are Paul and his friend, and they're talking about the risks of time travel. And then we get Rod Serling's opening narration, and we find out that Paul is going to go back into history and try and change three significant moments for what he thinks will be the better. So we start with our first event in Japan, and Paul is trying to get across a warning of a bomb that's going to go off and cause a lot of damage. And he's talking to a man that seems to have a pretty high position, but he's not the head authority. And he basically is skeptical of Paul's story because why wouldn't he be? And he tells him you're going to have to see some higher up authorities and see what they have to say about it. So time runs out and the bomb goes off. So Paul fails. So basically what I don't understand is how did he think that this was going to work? Did he just think by telling them that they were just going to believe him? Why would they? This makes no sense. Wouldn't he need to bring some more proof or think this out a little better? I didn't really buy this. And then we get another scene that doesn't really totally work either, which is in Berlin, Germany. We get the marching music and on Twilight Zone we know that that means we're going to see the Nazis and Hitler. And it turns out that Paul might have a chance to eliminate Hitler, but ultimately he gets into a thing where a maid takes up his attention for a little bit of time, and when he does get his chance, he ultimately fails. And I won't get into it too much, I'll just say the way that he fails is kind of lame, to be honest. I didn't really buy it. It seemed a little bit contrived to me. So we get the point, history can't be changed, but we get a third scene, which is definitely one too many, where he goes to a ship called the Lusitania, I believe is how it's pronounced, and he wants to avoid that from being torpedoed, and of course the captain doesn't believe him, because again, why would he? And Paul sees these torpedoes go off, so he gives up and concludes he can't change history, and he goes back to the present to talk to his friend about this, and I feel that this takes a little bit too long to establish. It takes almost half the episode. It's important to the second half of the episode, but I didn't think we really needed to see to see three scenes to show this and the scenes are okay they're well done enough if you can just ignore the gaps in logic that I talked about they're they're moody but I just didn't feel they were totally necessary so Paul concludes I can't change history but I can still live in it because I guess this guy never learns so he's going to go back to 1881 which he feels was a better time and his friend warns him don't do anything to change history of course while you're there because any little thing you do might have some kind of effect. And my question here is, how does Paul think that he isn't going to change anything? He, as he should have already learned that any little thing he does can change history, but we'll just go with it, I guess. So Paul does go to 1881, and he looks around, and I have to say right here, the episode does take a turn for the better, but it feels like a totally different episode. The mood is totally different, and I think this whole episode would have benefited from either focusing on the first half of the premise and fleshing it out more, making it more logical, or just focusing on the second half and drawing that out a little more, because I thought there were some interesting things there. But we got to go with what we're given. So what happens is Paul sees a newspaper after settling in, and it says that the president, President Garfield, I believe, is going to be shot. But he knows he can't do anything to change this, so he reluctantly accepts it. But as we'll find out throughout the episode, he'll have a harder time accepting these things as they relate to issues that are closer to him. So he goes to this boarding house where he's going to stay, and he meets a girl named Abigail, who's significant to the rest of the episode. And you can tell that Paul just seems happy where he is. Then we get a really good scene at the dinner table at the dinner table where Paul argues with a gentleman who has some very strong opinionated views on international affairs and Paul tries to stay out of it 
Abigail does speak up against this, and Paul seems to really like that. And eventually, after being pressed, he does speak out against the man, and he also tells a future things that will happen, which Abigail thinks is very strange. But this is a good scene. Then Abigail goes out and follows him, and you can tell she likes what he says, and that they get along really well, and that they could definitely hook up. But of course, Paul knows there's a major issue with this, that he's not from there, and he doesn't know how this will affect the time period or the future. Abigail also wants to know how he knows these things, but then they're kind of interrupted as we find out that the president is shot. And then we go basically to the next day where Paul apologizes to her about how he acted the night before because he was very reluctant, and she says it's okay, but she doesn't really seem to be that okay. I have to say that every Paul and Abigail scene works really, really well in this episode, and they're easily the highlight of the episode. It's kind of odd for Twilight Zone to go to the sentimental romantic route, but in this episode, it was a good decision. It works. So credit to both actors for the chemistry there. Then we go to a scene, a nice scene with Paul chatting with a horn player, and they're just reminiscing, talking about things, and it triggers off something in Paul, who figures out somehow that the school is going to catch on fire. But Paul now knows that he can't do anything to change this, even though he knows several children will be injured. And this really bothers him, but ultimately he decides, no, there's nothing I can do. That is until he actually finds the actual wagon that is going to cause this, the lantern is going to hit the school. So he argues with the driver about taking, you know, unhitching the horses and not driving the wagon, but they argue. And of course the wagon still gets out of control and the lantern hits the school. So the fire does happen. And Paul actually kind of indirectly caused it, I guess you could say. So Paul has a last scene with Abigail, which is really touching. Somehow these scenes just work. I'm not really sure what it is. And he explains to her he can't stay there because he knows too much about the past, and that's her time. And he realizes he has to live in his time. So we get a last scene with Paul and his friend where he says he realizes he can't change the past. We can only learn from the past, and he has to do things to make the future better. So a good lesson overall, but like I said, this episode's kind of all over the place. I don't really care for the first half, even though some of the scenes are well done on a technical level. And the second half is good, but it just has a strange feel at times, and it kind of feels like Paul should have learned his lesson from the first half. I'm not sure I really buy that, but I think opinions will definitely vary on this one. It's got some good, some bad. So I give No Time Like the Past a two and a half out of five. So right down the middle, an average episode. You can watch it if you want. You might like it. So two and a half out of five for No Time Like the Past. And as always, thank you very much for watching.